Jones has taken on the worst of the worst in his career, but he never dreamed he'd be taking on his own government. Dobbins claims that after risking his life and his family's, he was betrayed by the very agency he was proud to serve for 27 years because the key players in his case were allowed to stay on and carry out ATF's deadly gun walking scandal, Operation Fast and Furious. This has been what is characterized as an American law enforcement horror story. What happened to Jay Dobbins was wrong, and it was wrong on an epic scale. It's a sad day to a career ATF agent. It's a sad day for ATF leadership. The agency has lost its way. TF disregarded, never reacted to. There was evidence of threats of murder contracts on me being solicited amongst various criminal groups that ATF did not want to pay any mind to. A federal agent's home is set on fire in the middle of the night with your wife and children inside. Most people consider your house being set fire to at 3.30 in the morning to be a threat. ATF is possibly the best arson and explosives investigative body in the world. You conduct a threat assessment. ATF did not do that. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the Saturday Night Show. I wanted to take a deep dive into the ATF. Everybody knows that I've been covering this ATF agent, John Sassone, as well as the ATF, how they act, how they conduct business, and how we shouldn't be uh, surprised that they're one of the most corrupt alphabet agencies out there. And you're saying, Hollywood, why are you bringing up Jay Dobbins? Well, Dobbins versus United States. We all know Jay, he was the uh, infiltrator with the Hells Angels and stuff like that. We all know that story. But I, what I want to focus on is the ATF's behavior. This will give us an insight on what they're doing to the Mongols as far as the patch case is concerned. This whole thing with the ATF goes way back, decades. You know, everything from Randy Weaver in the 90s to Waco, everything. The way they operated has been off the books, off the cuff, and BS. So if they do something, to one of their own, what in the heck do you think is going to happen to one of us or another organization? If they're doing it against him, they'll do it against us, and they have no shame in what they did. I'm talking this guy, they flipped on him, man. They flipped on him 360 degrees, whatever you want to say. They threw him out just to be by himself and stuff. Again, regardless of what you think about the infiltration and stuff like that, everybody go out there, make your own decision. But let's focus on this Dobbins versus United States where this case came out and said, hey, the ATF knew they were doing something wrong and they did it anyway. Like I said, in a lot of these cases that you see in the patch case where a judge asks, hey, ATF, hand over this material. They think they're above the judicial system where they don't have to do it. And what's even worse is you have an ATF that ran weapons across the border and got somebody killed over it, also known as Fast and Furious. This is our tax dollars, people. Tax dollars that are going to these type of operations. Thank you, Outlaw Feminists. I really appreciate that. Big hug from Portland. Every time you get a deduction on your paycheck, it says FICO, whatever it is. You are funding these kind of agencies. And an ATF does not have the best record. And what's even more worrying is they're the ones that are in charge of guns. 
the licensings of gun dealers, everything. So they have their little fingers into everything and anything they can get their hands on. So as we start this Dobbins stuff, look at what they can do to their one of their own. They put him up as a superhero. And then said, screw you. We want nothing more to do with you. Very interesting case. Very interesting case. Listen to this right now. And this, see, the ATF is overseen by not only Congress, but the Inspector General's office. That The Inspector General is somebody that's going to dig into the agency and find out if they're doing something stupid. Now, under Obama's term, there was a guy named Eric Holder, and the ATF was at its worst under Eric Holder. That's when you had Black Rain. That's when you had all the appeals going. That's when they wouldn't stop going after the Mongols patch. And whose lapdog did they use? They used the ATF. They use John Sassone. It, it, you know, Sassone and Cervantes is up to their neck into all kinds of stuff. And showing you what they did to one of their own is going to be like, holy crap, are you kidding me? Yeah, they'll do it to their own. Listen to uh, what the investigator general came out with. Wasn't Listen there an it. inspector general report that concluded that the ATF's office in Phoenix did not adequately address the threats that were made to you? They went beyond that, that they said that ATF was reckless and dangerous and full of malfeasance and shrug and not do anything, not even lift a finger to conduct an investigation into it. Not even lift a finger. Now, what he's talking about, I believe it was 2008. What happened was he left witness protection. And not even 90 days later, his house was, you know, it was, it was put ablaze, man. Somebody, I guess, threw a bunch of gasoline on the porch, set it going. Now he was going out East and his family were there at the house. They were able to get out and stuff like that. The ATF knew about the threats, but didn't do nothing. What they did was try to turn it on him and say, well, you're the suspect. You're the one who did it. This used to be one of their own. And they just flat out turned and said, nah, hell with you. Why? Because he's a whistleblower. I thought that whistleblowers were supposed to have some type of protection. Not if you're in the ATF. No, what they do is turn around and, you know, like, tell you to bend your knees and get down just like you have that crap going on in Florida right now, where the FBI agent was a whistleblower about January 6th. And they just let loose on this guy in the street game. There's usually some sense of honor, a little bit, at least some sense of honor where you don't go after anybody's kids or their wife or girlfriend. You just don't do it. But in this case, they burnt the hell out of his freaking uh, house. And then the ATF came back and tried to put it on him. Talking about messed up. So what happened was they didn't even do a threat assessment on this. They didn't protect their witness. And Dobbins went and sued them. That's where you're going to get Dobbins versus United States here. Uh, let's uh, add that to the stream and go to that real quick. Just to give you a case summary of what was happening during Dobbins versus United States. Uh, in 2003, Dobbins then ATF agent engaged in undercover work. That's what we know. Uh, infiltrated the Hells Angels and assisted in the indictment of 36 people for racketeering and murder. The disclosure of his identity during the prosecutions led to threats against Dobbin and his family. 
ATF alleged failure to appropriately respond to the threats and to adequately conceal his identity during an emergency ro uh, relocation led Dobbins to seek compensation. In 2007, listen to this. ATF agreed to pay Dobbins a lump sum. ATF withdrew Dobbins and his family's fictitious identities in 2008 despite a 2000 threat assessment and that's in uh, 2008 is when the arson took place took place so not only did they put him in witness protection program but they removed it and that's when the attack started happening even though he was away from where it was going ATF really has an issue when it comes to doing things the right way. Look at Waco Twin Peaks, man, when that all went down. ATF had information that there was going to be problems at Twin Peaks. A, were set up the morning before, and they did nothing to prevent nine deaths. Nothing. This was the same thing with Laughlin. John Sasson was there at Laughlin, that casino, that day when everything went down. He was there. This is the guy who is everywhere. It's like he has his fingers in everything. We have an interview coming up with, it's uh, going to be a standalone type of video where you're going to see John Sassone debriefing somebody, implicating all kinds of stuff. And you're going to have to make your own decision when you see this video and you go back to the transcripts of the motion to vacate and see if Sassone was telling the truth. Because one thing that these ATF agents will not do is be above board. Be above board. And I know we all sit there like, damn, man, these guys are all over our ass. Well, it's kind of like cops and robbers, okay? And that's the way it used to be thought of, by the way, back in the 90s, whatever. 90s and before, it was always thought, hey, you guys are the cops. It's your job to catch us doing something. There was that understanding between the two. Hey, I'm not going to talk to you. You don't talk to me. It's your job to bust me. I get it. It's your job. We get that. That's why on the streets, you hardly ever seen a kill order on a cop. Because usually they were hands off because it would bring all kinds of crap to you. Things might have changed now. But one thing that hasn't changed is the corrupt, <laughs> the corrupt freaking ATF, DEA, and I hate to say even the FBI. I can't believe they kicked one of their own out in Florida for saying, hey, wait a second here. Not everybody that was there was guilty. So these witnesses, these, you know, whistleblowers, then, hey, well, wait a second, you went against the blue wall. You can't do that. Didn't anybody tell you that? You can't go against the blue law? Listen to this one. Nobody cared about what the OIG found. They sent that report to President Obama. They sent it to Eric Holder. They ignored it. And they left those people in place knowing that the allegations were true. And what happened in Operation Fast and Furious and ultimately Brian Terry's death should be no surprise to them. They were corrupt. They were dirty. They were criminals. And they chose to believe ultimately the people that ran Fast and Furious instead of me. They chose to be criminals, believe criminals, and all that type of stuff. Fast and Furious I know a lot of you younger guys don't know what that is. You were probably just growing up and stuff, but it was one of the biggest scandals of U.S. history, if you ask me, 
where they were actually selling guns to cartel members. You know, the freaks that want to chainsaw everybody up, that's what they were doing. They were selling weapons to them. And in the meantime, they're trying to get ours from us. That's kind of messed up, isn't it? Kind of screwed up type of way of thinking, if you ask me. Oh, we're going to give the guns to them so we can try to trace it back. Why take the risk? And then another law enforcement officer was killed. But then you have to ask yourself, well, it's not too far out there because in 1994, I no, it wasn't 94, it was 92 with the Branch Davidians, if I'm not mistaken, 91 or 92. And it was let a whole freaking, you, you burn them alive. It wasn't a candle that did that. It was on the ATF's part. And one of the things that you can kind of bring up into this is the Martinez deal with the, the Mongols where it was a no-knock warrant at 4 o'clock in the morning. See, all these police practices that they're putting in place, it's actually feeling like a police state now. It's actually feeling like a police state where they don't think they have to follow the rules of the Fourth Amendment, Eighth Amendment. They don't think it applies to them anymore. They think because they're the ATF that they do not have to turn over anything a judge orders you to. So we got to step back and look at that type of stuff. What kind of power are we letting these people have? If they're going to act like this, come on. One of the reasons why I do the wall of shame is because I want to show people that, hey, there's cops that do the same stuff that club members do. Well, yeah, yeah, everybody has bad apples, but there's a difference. The difference is cops swore an oath. They swore an oath. So they're held up to a higher standard. That's what people don't understand when it comes to this type of stuff. Let's go to uh, the story after the case broke. And this was out of the Phoenix New Times. Listen what happened here. A federal judge blasted the ATF in a recently released ruling that described how the agency mistreated an Arizona ex-agent who infiltrated the Hells Angels. Now, it goes back to J. Dobbins sued the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms uh, for failing to handle death threats against him following his undercover work against the notorious biker gang, as they put it. Now, let's see here. I'm going to just go down here, go out here. Here it is. This is what he wrote, Judge Algara. The ATF didn't offer a reward for information in the uh, arson fire as an agency would have normally done. The ATF, the officials, continued to view Agent Dobbins as a suspect and did so for a number of years. Come on, this is the ATF. If you thought he was, a, you know, he was a suspect, you should have arrested him by now. But you guys knew he wasn't. You are being vengeful. The judge said the ATF's conduct caused a gross breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. Wow, huh? And these are the same ones that want to take the stand against the Mongols. They have been going after them since 2008. It's 2022 now, and they're probably going before that. 
you know, you had Operation Biscuit with uh, the Hells Angels and stuff. Then it moved right into this deal with the Mongols. And you got to ask yourself, why? Why did they move at the Mongols so hard? It's a very interesting question. It really is. About why they moved so hard on that. So John was there ever since the beginning. In that interview, he was actually gloating about how him and Cervantes actually just got off the case with the Mongols. They were gloating about Operation Black Rain. And those that don't understand what Operation Black Rain is, please go take a look at it. You'll understand what Operation Black Rain is and what it has done to put the motorcycle club scene on notice by the feds. It isn't any coincidence that the Justice of uh, the Justice Department puts clubs in a category of organized crime. It isn't a coincidence. This is to enable them to use laws like RICO. You got to remember RICO, when Nixon signed that, it was supposed to be a tool to go against the mafia, Costa Nostra, all that kind of stuff. It wasn't until late 79 that Sonny and the Hells Angels were the first club to face that law. And why do they have such a hard on? Because you got to remember the government's in business. Property. Oh boy, they love going after that. (laughs) They love to go after the confiscations and all that stuff. They have millions in confiscations. Even before somebody is found guilty. And this is the type of stuff that a lot of people have to face when they're going up against the feds. They have a 98% conviction rate. They have limitless funds because of you and I. We're the ones paying the taxes so they can go and go and go. Nobody actually has a chance, not even rich people, to fight the DOJ. And when the DOJ has an agency like the ATF that is rogue as hell out there, it's nearly impossible because they can make stuff up. They can do whatever they want and they're not going to get caught. When they do get caught, it's a slap on the hand. Slap on the hand. Listen to this. It happens because people become power corrupt. The ATF Internal Affairs Report found the agency guilty of what they had done, and they stood by and allowed DOJ to continue to attack me, even though they had a hard, cold document in their hands, internally produced, that told them that everything that DOJ was denying and arguing against was actually true and was accurate. It was accurate. Again, they knew it all. Again, regardless of what your thoughts is on the infiltration or what he should have got, all that stuff, that's one thing. My focus is on the dirtiness of this organization. Can you imagine an organization that knew that there was going to be a shootout in a public place, a public restaurant where kids were? Women were, families were, but didn't do a damn thing about it. They let it happen. Then they got on there and got a hard on over the turkey shoot that they got to do. Because I believe four of them, the victims, were shot by cops that day at Waco Twin Peaks. And now the patch case is in the Ninth Circuit. Three of the judges, one appointed by uh, W. Bush, Obama, Trump, it looks like they're disagreeing with what the prosecution is trying to do 
as far as taking away the rights to the patch. What do they think that they're going to accomplish by taking the rights to a trademark away? What, are you going to go on your own on uh, online store and sell them to people that are ignorant that uh, buy them and then wonder why people get hurt? That's our government's way of thinking here, people. Come on, we're in a situation right now where we were energy efficient, gas prices low, until Pamperhead came. And next thing you know, we're going over to Venezuela, Iran, and all that. For That's how our government thinks. There's no common sense there. So why not? Oh, we'll take the trademark and we'll just sell it to somebody else. Are you stupid? Are you that ignorant to think that's what's going to happen there? And at the Ninth Circuit, when the attorneys and the prosecution was going back and forth in their arguments, they even said there's potential of violence because people have deep-seated feelings in this deep-seated feelings and you're gonna go take something off what are you gonna do anybody that continues to wear it you know pull off their bike and take them off their bike come on so the whole point of this is if the atf can do it to one of their own somebody they held up as a hero what do you think or what chance do you think you have if they come after you? Let's face it. A lot of people don't have money. Most people are put in a position where they have to sit in jail and they have to go with a public pretender. That's not representation. Because if you put somebody that actually had money next to the guy who has to have a public pretender, the guy with money is getting off. So let's face the facts. If ATF comes after you, what kind of chance are you going to have against them? Especially in a federal court. The federal court is something else. I think it's 80% time now that you got to do if you get convicted. So as a citizen, what if you were innocent? Hell, they were trying to put an arson charge on one of their former agents. Where it showed, hey, I wasn't around here. So what if that happens to you? How are you going to say, wait a second, man. While you're sitting in jail for the last two years because you didn't have bond money to bail out. And this can happen on the local government, uh, the local and state too. I'm furious at what happened in Rhode Island. They had an illegal wiretap. An illegal wiretap on Tuna McGuire. Why wasn't that case kicked? Oh, you just can't use that evidence. Well, wait a second. What? What? That right now is insanity. That is out. It's outrageous that they can get away with something like that. But it's because we don't have the money to fight them. In a RICO case, Minimum on a murder count, if you're one that's been indicted, it is a minimum, because I've talked to a bunch of attorneys, $500,000 to defend yourself against one count of murder. And sometimes you wonder why people say, hey, wait a second here. Just give me the plea deal because I can't pay that much for an attorney. And if you don't got $50,000 for the 10% of the retainer, you got nothing coming anyway. So you're forced to do it. $500,000. Think about that. 
What if you were innocent? Martinez, the one that was found not guilty on murder one and murder two, hung on the manslaughter. So what's going to happen to him? Well, you know, the feds don't want to lose because a cop was killed. So I guarantee they're probably going to make a deal, hopefully get time served, or or they're going to retry him on the manslaughter charge. How is that even plausible in a country where the justice system is supposed to be equal for everyone. It ain't equal when you have to throw out 500 G's on a murder in a RICO indictment. Because you got to remember, Black Rain, I think there was over 70 people that were busted in that one. And then comes out later that Nicola's, where a shooting happened, Cervantes and Sassone were sitting out there watching. Again, could have prevented it. And then it's alleged they gave a false police report of what they seen. And that was one of the major things that led to Operation Black Rain. That's one of the things that led to Operation Black Rain. All that money. Isn't that what this is all about? Money with them? We have to get money for our budgets. So you actually have, it's kind of like a cop. You have to have so many tickets written by the end of the month. It's the same for them. When has it become about, well, you got to get so many cases, so many arrests, so many convictions before you get a budget. That isn't crime solving. That's an enterprise. And they mostly target low individuals on the income scale. Let's go to some of you in the chat room. I've been rambling here because it's a subject that I feel everybody needs to know about. The case isn't over. Everybody's still in jeopardy. And it's because of an agency that is corrupt as hell. They're throwing one of their own under the bus. They're using Montebello Police Department. They're using all these local independent police departments on their gang task force. And you had one guy leading it all that's been mixed up in everything. Let's be real, Hollywood. Joseph Gee, we're all guilty until proven innocent, and you better have paper for a lawyer and bail, or one is pretty much, <laughs> yeah, screwed. Pretty much screwed. Now, I believe wholeheartedly in this country. I have a hard time believing in its institutions, but I love this country, and I love the men and women that served this country. I believe in their sacrifices. So I believe that you have to have some hope that America is going to be what America stands for. And it does come to fruition that, yeah, it does kind of seem you're guilty until proven innocent now. Because look at the media and how they had the Mongols in the newspaper. Look at how they had Derek Maguire in the newspaper. Look at how they had some of these other clubs in the newspaper. They're not even given a chance to prove their innocence because the media goes out there and taints the jurors. And the media uses law enforcement propaganda to taint it. And that ain't right. Uh, let's see here. SNS, what's up? The police and law enforcement have no obligation to stop a crime. I don't remember what the case was on 
but it's a ruling. That is one that came out of the Parkland shooting. Yes, you had a cop stood his ass outside while there was a slaughter happening inside. And ever since then, it might have been in case law before that, but ever since then, it's come prominent that, hey, they have no obligations to stop crime. But my question would be, hey, wait a second. Wait, time out here. Then what the hell we need you for? That's what the Second Amendment becomes. So if you're not here to stop crime, then I don't need you. You're just a waste of taxpayers' dollars, in my opinion. Let's see here, Mark. What's up, Mark? Bail is all you need because no sense going back uh, or going to jail or court. You got to remind, yeah, you're damn right, man. Because most of the time, I think Derek was out on uh, house arrest when he was handed the sentence uh, a couple days ago. But do you ever notice, hey, wouldn't you say that's part of doing your time right there? It is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Garrison, aren't a lot of these guys veterans? And yeah, and you know what? That is what's even more disappointing is when you do get these veterans that go into law enforcement because they want to continue serving. Some of them turn out to be bad apples. Now I have, you know what? I always stick to the saying, you're a cop, be a cop. I'm a biker. I'm going to be a biker. Your job's to catch me. I don't want nothing to do with you. But at the same time, I know, hey, yeah, they are needed. They are, or we'll have anarchy. But at the same time, if you're going to be a cop, be a human being. I think that is the biggest thing people have against law enforcement is the God complex. Don't be a God because you're not. Do your job correctly. Don't go out there, you know, having a vengeance against people just to bust them. Now, a lot of clubs, a lot of the bigger ones, they have an overwhelming majority. I'm talking on the 99.99% majority of hardworking people. But because of propaganda thrown down by the DOJ, you have everybody in a vest that's now it's a criminal. I hear that some of the times on my platforms. Well, they're a gang, aren't they? They're claiming territory. Nobody even claims territory anymore, man. That stuff is so far gone. Give it a break. You're wanting it to turn into what you want it to be and not reality. That's what I say. Uh, let's see here. Gary, what's up, Gary? Most cannot afford to accept a plea. Hell no. <laughs> you know what? You can't even take it to the box with a public pretender. You can't. Then people are so overworked, have so many cases, you're not going to get the representation you need, so you might as well dig your ass into some law books and do it yourself. And that's not the way this country is supposed to be. And besides that, the public pretender and the prosecutor work in the same damn office building. So they're out there drinking beers together and all that stuff, talking about what deal they can get so they don't have to go to court. Save the taxpayers some money. Uh, preacher, what's up, buddy? Uh, Leo treats us if we're uh, guilty until proven innocent. I believe they're all crooked until proven otherwise. And I'm not getting close enough to find out. <laughs> well, uh, let's hear one more on here. Man. Dobbins said that you guys abandoned me. You have not protected my safety or my family's safety. The Department of Justice, the most they did is that they countersued Jay for money he made from a book about ATF. So they countersued him during his case. 
because he wrote a book? Well, wait a second. Is ATF going against uh, Kozlowski? He's got a bunch of books out there. He's even got a podcast coming out. So you have to ask yourself, why is it good for some, but not others? Personally, I'm waiting for Sassone to go out there and start writing a book about his time going against the Mongols and the patch case and all that shit. That's what I'm waiting for. And I think within the next couple of years, if it already isn't happening, you're going to see one of them books. But they went after Dobbins because, hey, you know, we're pissed off. You were making money off of your job. What about all your other ATF people? What about all these people that leave the government to go work in the private sector? And next thing you know, they're writing tell-all books. We see it all the time. It's only when they put the agencies in a bad light that they get all pissed off all pissed off because they do not want corruption exposed. That's why they all freak out when Horowitz, he's actually a good freaking uh, IG and stuff, really digs in and tries to find out what's going on with people on the inside. That Fast and Furious thing, that was BS. Should have never happened. People were warning them that there was corruption and next thing you know, somebody ends up dead and there's a bunch of guns in Mexico with cartels. Come on. Uh, Mark, Hell's Angels were lied to by Dobbins. Should they sue? Let's be frank. Let's be honest. I brought it up before. There's bikers and then there's cops. The cops' jobs are to buzz bikers doing what they're doing. It, it, that's the way it used to go round and round and round. Everybody knew if you were doing dirt that you better be ready for an infiltration and it was the cops, it was their job to bust you. And how somebody gets in the undercover, hey, you got to say to yourself, you got in, right? So I don't know if they could or not. I don't know, man. I'm not a lawyer on that kind of stuff. I'm just coming at you with another angle because I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, man, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm coming from different angles of this story to try to present another side. So when you ask a question like that, I got to say to myself, coming from the experience I come from, well, we all knew if you're doing dirt, it's their job to catch us. And if they catch you, they catch you. As long as they do it legally where it isn't a bunch of setups where they intentionally go out there and create crimes like they did. Do you guys know what the stash house cases are with the ATF? It happened all over the country, especially here in Chicago. Uh, the stash house case they had going here in Chicago was they would open a pawn shop and then they would go out on the streets, one of their agents, and fill somebody's head with, hey, man, we're looking for this. We're looking for that. We'll give you this much money. And then they would go out there and do the crime and bring it back. And then they would bust them for it. That's what stash house cases are. And it's they did that. They went out and implemented the crime. And I would have to say a lot of these undercovers that whatever organization they go in, they cause problems with inside the club. You have it to where a lot of clubs now are finally trying to come together and make peace. And I would suggest watch the ones that are trying not to have peace. Ones that are trying to break the peace. Because it would be probably the right way of thinking, hey, you might have cops in there. You might have them trying to cause a lot of problems. Brandon, yeah, that was always a sick puzzle for me, how Obama thought giving guns to six twisted individuals who sell poison to our children in attempts 
to see where the bodies fall is going to solve anything. I agree 100%. Me and China Dow, we talked about it the other day. You have these people that are uh, doing candy pills like Skittles and stuff for fentanyl. They're sick. They're sick people, 100%. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kurt Dale. Been a long uh, life uh, 81 supporter, but love your channel, homie. He did make full patch. He's a pig, but they were his brothers. ATF, uh, uh, ACAB all day, but he got uh, F same with McQueen. It just goes to show you when you're not needed anymore, they'll discard you. They'll just throw you away. So if they're doing that to their own agents, you do not stand a chance. You don't stand a chance against them. I don't care who you are. You're not going to stand a chance if they do that to one of their own people. Uh, let's see here. Joseph. I can't believe that Jay still lives in America and rides a bike every day. I mean, how is he not popped yet? Well, your question has to come back to. Is that what you're looking for? And if you are, why? Are you looking at it as he did his job? Or is he in some way, was he a traitor? It's one thing to ask a question like that. But another one to really take an in-depth look and come at it from all angles. So the guy was doing his job. This is one angle people are going to come at. He was doing his job. He did what his bosses said. And the after effects was he did his job and they sent him out the pasture. That's going to be one of the arguments out there. But there's so many different arguments to that. And you got to ask yourself again. What's up, Chase? It might be easy to put some kind of question like that out. But are you the one that's going to do it? Or are you expecting somebody else to do it? And if you are, then you're saying, well, wait a second. Don't call them a gang, call them a motorcycle club. But wait a second. You're the one that said to go out there and pop somebody. So what? which one's it going to be? See how many different ways of the, uh, you know, the argument can go here? Uh, just chilling, huh, Chase? Uh, Gary, just uh, me, not Jay Bird's getting what he's sown. He just tried to cash in on the feds. He gets what's coming to him, and kudos to Hollywood for not bringing little Dave the Rat into this. You know what? I'm really, you know what? That was only one part of the case with the Mongols patch case, only one section. He's out of there now. The club doesn't want nothing to do with them. We can make our determinations from the evidence that was in the transcripts, everything that came out of the hearing. So to me, that part is done. What we need to do is go and look at ATF actions that led into that kind of case. Like a lot of you probably don't know Doc and Al Cavazos. Yes, they're out of prison. But they later went to try to get all the property back from the cops. And they actually wanted it to go to trial in order to prove that Cervantes and Sassone was lying during Operation Black Rain of what they saw at Nicholas. I would have really wished that it would have went to trial. But the judge right away said, no, 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 we're not going to relitigate this. Of course you're not. Because you don't want a government agency to made to look like a fool. Uh, let's see here. I believe the fact that Dobbins is still alive proves that they are motorcycle club. I agree. I agree. And not a gang. And this should make law enforcement narrative look even worse. They're just after clubs for money. I agree right there. Because... If you're out, and that's why I, you know, I, I answered the question like I did. 
if they're not a gang, why would you say, why is this guy still living with me? I don't care what people do. I don't like seeing human life gone. I don't like seeing anybody hurt. I never will. Again, they had a job to do. We had our job to do to stay away from them. And you know what? When the two come, it is what it is. Everybody knew their place in the game. But for somebody to lose their life over a job, come, I, I can't, I can't, no. And then you can't come back and say that they're a motorcycle club at that because you lost the argument the minute something happened to the guy. You know, that's just, you know, where I uh, believe right there. Uh, and not a gang and should make la uh, law enforcement narrative look even worse. It should. Because the biggest club on planet earth didn't do anything as far as retribution because they are a club. They're not a gang. If they were a gang, he wouldn't be walking, but they're a club. Remember that. Uh, let's see here. It goes to show that clubs aren't as dirty as they try to make us out to be. If anyone is going to pop them off, it will be the government. This guy's pissed off the government, so I don't know, man. This guy's pissed them off. Uh, I think the appeal was going until 2020, and I think there was a motion filed at the Supreme Court level. I have to look more into this. I'm going to try to get Dobbs on the show, or I'm going to try to get his attorney on the show, because I would like to learn more about how this case all formed, how it all came together. Who were the bosses? Who, where did the corruption, was it ever weeded out? These are questions I want to hear from them. We all know about the infiltration stuff, so that's, you know, to the back end here. I want to know the important stuff so we can share it with everybody. This is how they work. This is how they're going to treat us. This is against the Constitution of the United States, and this is against the law. That's why I'd like to have him on. You know, if I can get him on the show, I'll try to get him on the show to go uh, and talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, Joseph uh, G, what's up, man? Our government is tyrannical. And unfortunately, you can look at it that way. My God, it's not like the boomer, uh, the baby boomer generation that we had that really taught us Generation Xers how things are supposed to be, how government's supposed to act. There was actually civic classes where, hey, you believed in your government. And it's sad to say a lot of people can't do that no more. And it's because of agencies like this. And, hey, you can't give the FBI a pass, man. You had over Hoover over there. He was the biggest blackmailer in the history of law enforcement here in the United States. Uh, Joseph, hey, man, didn't mean to get everybody upset. You Nobody's upset at you, man. In here, in this channel, you're allowed to express your thoughts. Nobody's going to get mad at you about that. I'm just coming from a different angle on that. Where trying to give you an explanation, I you're a sub man, I love you to death, but you can have an opinion on this channel. That's why we bring up controversial stuff in order to get some debate going. Because if we can't sit at a table and work out our differences, then what's the point? We're always going to be at each other's necks, so no. Uh, and I'm just saying that, you know, yeah, they may do him in some that it's all in the future out of our hands, but those are the type of questions you got to ask yourself when you ask them type of questions. Yeah. We're here to challenge you and we're here to try to get a conversation out. And I think this is one of the most interesting series that we're going to do on this channel is dig deep. I actually ordered Agent Rebels out bad book. Yeah, I think you guys, you know, you really need to get a copy of that. And I'm going to go through what he had on Operation Black Rain. He really dug into that case, 
which led to the Save the Patch case as we know it now. Really going to look at uh, into that one for you. Uh, see here. Guess you're assuming I'm uneducated. No, I'm not. Out. Why would I assume you're uneducated? You know, the first three letters of assuming's ass, man. I don't consider any of you guys uneducated. You just got to see, that's the thing. You got to come back with an argument. You can't come back where it makes it seem like I'm bashing on you because I ain't. I'm giving you my viewpoint of it, where you gave me your viewpoint. That's not thinking you're uneducated, man. I don't do that kind of crap here. I take everybody's side in the consideration. If I really wanted to turn this channel into a one-way deal, one-way deal, it wouldn't be any good and it wouldn't be entertaining and it wouldn't challenge you. And what's the point of having that channel then? So no, I don't think you're uneducated, man. I don't. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, not me, uh, Joe. Oh, yeah, you guys got a side thing going on there. I'm sorry, man, but that's just the way I e even think about that stuff. We have to have a two-way conversation. Uh, Scott, what's up, Scott? So much knowledge being put out. Keep going, Hollywood. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for that, man. I really uh, appreciate it. Hey, Leo, 2009, what's up, buddy? Uh, let's see here. Mark, how could you be uneducated? You could spell. <laughs> hey, I'm hooked on phonics English dropout here, man. I, I, you know what? I butcher the English language. That's just me, man. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Terry, uh, my girl Terry out there. Uh, the state of Texas has a law I uh, affect to protect cops from incompetence. Like, how does that work? I, you know what? I would go and talk to Popeye and OG. I know they're over on Rumble right now. Uh, Texas Biker Radio. They really know the laws down in Texas. And my Saturday show is going to be basically me because Sundays I like doing interviews and stuff. We're going to talk about these kind of cases, these kind of issues. Uh, again, biker news is in, you know, the mornings and stuff, but I like to dig in, man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Salty Army is Legion, Gunner London. Joe, no, brother, that's not me. No, man, I wouldn't go there with you, man. Not uh, <laughs> rock on, man. Uh, let's go to Gunner uh, Garrison. They just made it illegal for a cop to have sex with the hooked in uh, uh, Michigan. It happens. It happens. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, what do you think, man? Should I try to get Jay on the show to tell us his experience of the ATF and how they threw him to the side, how the corruption within the ATF was, and I have to ask myself, is there a place where everybody could debate the issues without being pricks if I do get them on? Just a question. <laughs> you know, I think it'd be very interesting to hear his side of the story. We, I try to give everybody's side of the story out. Sometimes it bites me in the ass, but sometimes it don't. But it's very educational and it is entertaining to everybody else uh every dude every dobbins interview is the same but they weren't interviewed by hollywood and hollywood's a different kind of interviewer i don't throw softballs <laughs> sorry man i just don't uh Anyway, guys, gals, you go out there and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Tomorrow I'm on at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time with Archbishop 1%er. Boy, we had a good one with Big Bone uh, last uh, Sunday. Watch that one, but uh, you all be safe out there. If you're riding, I'm jealous as hell uh, down south, people. But you guys have a good one. Enjoy uh, the rest of your night and all that good stuff. I'll talk to you later. Rock on. Thanks for uh, coming to watch tonight.